friends, welcome to Yarny Hearts Fall Knitting Plans. My name is Jess, you can find me on Instagram at Yarny Heart. This is usually the show where I talk about all the yarny things that I've been up to, but today we're going to be talking about all the yarny things that I'm going to get up to this fall. So like I said, this is going to be a fall knitting roundup, pattern roundup, fall knitting plans, inspo sort of thing. I do have plans to make some of these patterns, but I have 12 to share with you, and I I mean, I'm a pretty fast knitter, but I don't think I'm that fast. <laughs> so some of these are going to be amorphous plans or vague wants for fall, um, and some of these are going to be very definite solid plans of things that I'm planning on knitting this season, um, but I'll kind of talk more about that when I get to them. So I have this broken up into a couple of categories. I have sweaters, which is including cardigans. Um, and then I also have a couple of vests and like different kind of like worn garment accessories. Um, and this is because in the climate where I live, fall is pretty short and it's also still pretty warm. And so here in California, I live in Northern California in the San Francisco Bay area, but um, here in this area, fall is very much more vest weather as opposed to full sweater weather most of the time and so i do think that i want to add some vests into the mix um just so that i have some more layering options that are still my hand knits um and then finally i have some accessory patterns and like true accessories which includes like socks um i think i have a cowl in there um so kind of things of that nature so that's kind of how we're going to organize today. Um, but without further ado, let's kind of get right into it. So we're going to start off with sweater patterns. Um, this first pattern that I have to share with you is called Foxberry by Zari Nordland. Um, pardon my bangs. It's been a full day at work. Um, so we're gonna try and roll with it. Um, so this first pattern is called Foxberry by Zari Nordland. I am planning on knitting this very soon. Um, I leave for Korea in nine days and the flight there and back is going to be about 13 hours uh, straight, non-stop flying. Um, so I am picking this as my plain project. Um, so I'm going to be winding up all the yarn beforehand and just kind of packing it with me. I don't know that I'm necessarily going to finish the sweater during all of my plane travel, but this is certainly something that's going to like keep me occupied for the majority of that plane travel. This is a top-down uh, crew neck sweater with a lace yoke that includes these bobbles and these kind of like lace, um, I guess it is just lace, I don't think there's any cables here, but um, it's kind of like lace pattern that um, in sorry description says that uh, reminds her of little fox faces and the bobbles remind her of berries which is why this is called the fox berry uh, foxberry sweater um so this was released in january 2022 so it's not a super new pattern um but i still think it is very cute so this pattern calls for a light fingering uh weight yarn held together with a lace weight mohair to make a dk weight the original yarn used in the sample was knitting for olive merino and knitting for olive soft silk mohair however i'm not going to be using those i'm going to be using some stash yarn um, and this comes in a range of sizes from one to nine with one being 32 inch bust circumference and size nine being a 63.5 inch bust circumference. And it's intended to be worn with a positive ease of 2.25 inches. Um, so yes, originally I was a little bit scared about not having enough yarn to knit the size that I really wanted to knit to get that 2.5, um, 2.5 what did I say? 2.25 <laughs> inches. Um, I was a little bit worried about that, but after reading some of the project notes, a lot of people experienced a lot of growth with this sweater, where once they wet blocked it, it just kind of opened up a lot, like way larger than the size that they should have gotten based on, um, based on the patterns measurements. Um, so I'm hopeful that that will happen to me and it does kind of make sense because it is a lot of lace work and lace work does tend to open up quite a lot when you block it. So I'm hoping that will be the case. Um, you know, we'll get a nice sweater that fits me properly <laughs> as opposed to being a little bit small. Um, I do feel like I was a little bit in between sizes there um, because I think if I 
do knit this one size up I think I will be like I think that will be more than the intended positive ease by quite a bit so um I'm opting for less and I'm hoping for more is kind of where I'm at with that um but the yarn that I will be using is um yarn that I picked up during the Bay Area yarn crawl and this is Earth Yarns Harvest Fingering base in the color grape leaf um, and I believe this is just a typical sock yarn. Oh, it's one, so no nylon in this. It is 100% superwash merino, uh, superwash extra fine <laughs> merino um, in a fingering weight. And then I'm going to be holding that with this Anzula Luxury Fibers in the base, in their hazy base, which is their um, cereal packet and silk base. And this is in the colorway Olivia. And so holding these together I think I'm going to get a very nice middle kind of forest green because this is kind of more of like a pistachio in my opinion and this is kind of more of like a truer forest green but I think together they're going to look very good um and so yeah so the original sample photo is in this lovely like burnt orange which is very very fall coated um but I do think that knitting it up in this green is going to be very similarly fall coated and I'm really excited I've been so excited to get this on the needles um and like wind up this yarn and everything but I've been telling myself to be patient and wait because this is my plain project and I have plenty of other stuff to work on right now I do not need to be casting on something frivolously right now um but yeah so this is a very solid fall plan I um, can literally count down the days until I'm casting this on uh, so this is definitely going to be happening this season. The second sweater that I have to share with you is one that I've been talking about quite a bit at this point, so it's probably no surprise that the next sweater that I'm going to talk about is Saski by The Petite Knitter. Um, Saski is a also a top-down, but it is a circular yoke, um, color work yoke, stranded color work sweater um, that features this motif that has bunnies, and moons and clouds on it it is just absolutely darling um if you've been following along with the podcast you'll know that i have been current I, that i have been working on another pattern of hers um the seek seek jumper which has a motif of squirrels on it i've been working on that for my boyfriend um but this is a very very similar pattern um yeah very very similar pattern top down circular yolks stranded color work fingering weight um, it's, it's going to be very, very similar to that one, um, with the exception of it being a bunny motif instead of a squirrel motif. Um, so like I said, this calls for fingering weight yarn. Um, the yarn that is used in the sample is Tuku Wolf Fingering. I believe that they were doing a collaboration for this project, but it's just, it's just so nice. So this comes in 10 sizes from one to 10 with size one being 32 and a quarter inches bust circumference and the size 10 being 68 and a quarter. Um, and this is intended to be worn with a positive ease of anywhere from four and a half to nine and a half inches. So it's a super cute sweater, nice and roomy, very boxy. Um, and I think there are a couple of options um, I do actually own this pattern. I bought it at the same time that I bought the Seek Seek pattern um, because she was having a buy one get one sale so I just picked it up at the same time. But looking through the different photos it seems that there are options to bind it off with a contrasting color around the um, around the edges which very much reminds me of the Between Petals pullover that I knitted last year. Um, or it looks like a lot of the testers have bound off with just a very simple kind of rib. Not entirely sure which one I'm going to opt for yet, um, but I do know that I have yarn for this project already. This is also yarn that I've shared before, um, and this is also yarn that I got during the yarn crawl, um, but I am planning on using this fade kit from Knitted Wit. Um, the color set is called Yellow Brick Road. But this is a fade kit with six skein, six mini skeins of what is basically a 100% superwash merino. Each mini skein has 45 yards in it, so altogether this will be plenty of yarn to knit the yoke of a colorwork sweater, aka this colorwork sweater. I think it'll be very cute um, paired with this brown. This is Knit Picks Capretta, which is uh, fingering weight 
It is 80% superwash, fine merino wool, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon, and this is in the colorway Pinecone Heather. And I think together they're going to look really good. So you can see the Pinecone Heather color has these undertones of yellow, which very much match the overtones of the fade kit that I'll be using with it. So I think together it's going to look really good, and it's also going to look so fall, and I'm so excited. So one thing that I have not yet decided for sure for sure but i'm like mostly sure is the orientation of the fade kit that i want to do because right now i'm thinking that i want to do it this way so that the moons so that well yeah i guess like this would be like the collar part and then this would probably be like the moons and then the clouds and the bunnies um so i'm thinking that i'm going to orientate it this way because also this way it will fade darker 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 into the brown color for the rest of the body so that's kind of what i'm thinking um, yeah, so that's uh, my plans for the Saski sweater. This is definitely one that like this yarn is dedicated to that sweater and I am not going to use it for anything else. I'm completely positive of that. It's just going to be a matter of how the timing works out between um, working on the Foxberry, finishing up the Seek Seek Jumper and things like that. Um, in that sense, it kind of uh, in that sense, it kind of remains to be seen if this is going to be a, a true fall knit or kind of cross over into my winter knits. Um, but kind of like the way that I'm mapping it out in my brain right now is I can finish up Seek Seek pretty quickly. Um, Foxberry, I want to try and knock out a majority of it while I'm in Korea so that there's not a whole lot left to do by the time I get back. Um, if any, I mean, in a perfect world, I fig I finish it all during the trip, right? But we don't live in a perfect world. Um, <laughs> and then um, I'm really hoping that I'll be able to cast on Saski as kind of like a mid later fall kind of knit. Um, I think ideally, I'd really like to get it casted on like maybe end of October so that that will carry me like end of October through November is kind of the timeline that I'm thinking there. But that's the Saski pattern by the Petite Knitter, one that I have mentioned several times on, on my usual podcast at this point. Um, next, I have kind of, um, I have two sweaters that I kind of want to talk about in conjunction with each other. Um, the first one that I have to share with you is, God, I can never pronounce this correctly. I, I think it's pronounced Gansey even though it's spelled Guernsey, but I think it's pronounced Gansey, the Gansey Genzer, and this is by um, Sadness Design. Sadness, I can't pronounce any of the words in this pattern, um, but this is by Sadness Design, which is the same company that makes Sadness Garn, the yarn. Um, unfortunately, this pattern is not publicly available, I don't think. I'm pretty sure, like, with many Sadness Garn patterns, you have to have the actual physical booklet in order to get the pattern for this. So, I think this would be a, a really, really fun knit, um, but I can't, like, I can't recommend it in good faith because I can't even get my hands on this pattern. Um, so I'm kind of including it in this list as, like, inspo more so than something to actually go out there and knit um the description on Ravelry is not in English um I believe this is I believe this is Swedish I believe this is Swedish on top and then Italian on the bottom I do know some Italian but I do not know enough Italian to be able to read this description confidently um I'm not even going to say if it's top down or, or bottom up, but from what I can tell on this, this looks like an all over textured drop shoulder sweater. Um, from what I can tell, it looks like a folded over um, neckline and it has this very thick rib section at the bottom of the sleeves and the bottom of the hem. And it also has this very oversized look to it. Like it seems like there's no shaping throughout the body at all and it's just kind of knit in this very oversized fit it's very boxy looking but i'm so in love with it this sample is knit up in sanis garn tin silk mohair and sanis garn double sunday held together um to make a dk weight and 
gosh, it is just so hard to find information on this because it only exists in a booklet form. Um, and it comes in sizes extra small to 4XL. And unfortunately, though, based on the Ravelry page, it I can't tell what the actual measurements of those sizes will be um, in the end. And looking at it, it does look very similar to other, like, um, all over textured, like, um, there's very much like this, been this trend of these sweaters that have like these horizontal s sections that have different textures in them. Like, I think, I think it's called the Ingrid sweater, but like Petite Knit has a couple of them. Um, I think my favorite thing's knitwear has a couple of them as well. But this one in particular kind of captured my attention because I really liked the weight and like the heft of this particular sweater and I think partially what's doing it for me is like the drop shoulder but I think it's also like the neckline style I think it's like the width or like the length of that rib section um because one thing that I have been really wanting to knit and been on the lookout for a pattern for is like just a really oversized like I want to say boxy, but I also kind of want like balloon. -y. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. I just want a really, 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 really oversized sweater. And I, it's so hard to find something like that in a commercial store um, that kind of has the exact fit that I'm thinking of. And of course, being a knitter, I'm like, well, I could just knit it myself, except the problem is I'm also kind of having a hard time finding a sweater pattern that fits this exact description of what I'm looking for. So like even this pattern, um, the Ganzi Genzer, um, I, if in a perfect world, I would like it to have, I don't want to say shaping, but I'm thinking I almost want to have it have short rows in the back to kind of give it a little bit of like a curved hemline. Um, just because I want more so than this flat across the bottom kind of silhouette I'm kind of wanting it to have a little bit of like a curved like balloon like silhouette but I also wanted to have this same that same style of like oversized sleeve that same style of like drop shoulder I basically just want it to be like big everywhere and um, I'm gonna see if I can drop a picture of it here somewhere but like literally like my inspo is this like one in Pinterest <laughs> picture of like this girl's fall outfit where she has like this like brick red oversized sweater with like this tiny mini skirt and these cute little heels I own the skirt I own the heels like all I need is the sweater and the thing is I think every time I think about this Pinterest picture the sweater gets bigger in my head <laughs> like I always go back and look at the actual picture and I'm like you know the sweater is actually not that oversized really in the picture it's just that I keep inflating it in my head and like the more that I do that though, the more I want that ideal, that idealized, romanticized, fantasized, oversized sweater, <laughs> the more that I want it. Um, and so I think for me, like I'm definitely looking for a pattern that fits something that only exists in my imagination, um, which is leading me to believe that I might end up, I might have to end up just making this sweater myself <laughs> and possibly like frankensteining elements of other sweater patterns that I already own but I will get back to you on that it's just I know what I want I know this exact silhouette that I want for this sweater I know I want it to like cover the butt area but then also be a little bit raised in the front so that it doesn't cover the so it doesn't completely cover I don't want it to look like a dress, but I want it to cover the butt. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I also want it to like kind of cinch in a little bit with the ribbing. And I want it to have a long rib section, a long chunky rib section. And I don't want it to be all over stock in it. I want it to have some kind of texture, but I'm also feeling very particular about the texture that I want it to have because I don't want it to have an extreme amount of cables. Like I think having some cables would be nice, but I don't want it to be all over cables. Like. For instance like my snowfall sweater that i just completed i think that would make it like too heavy um i kind of wanted to have like a little bit of like this light look i'm describing a sweater that doesn't exist i'll get back to you when i either find that cinderella pattern or when i give up and decide to make my own pattern i'll get back to you um either way 
let me I need a water break the second sweater in this uh series <laughs> that I'm going through that kind of is leaning towards the idea of this sweater that I want is the archway sweater by Yuka Tomioka and this was released earlier this year in February and this is also a very similar kind of like sectioned patterned textured knit is it top down it is top down so this is so this one is for sure top down um oversized drop shoulder kind of a very similar look to the previous sweater um with some key differences um this is going to be a lighter gauge than the other sweater which i think i'm kind of leaning towards i think i would want it to be like a lighter gauge um but this uses this recommends either Derurum Natura Ulysse um, or holding knitting for olive merino and knitting for olive soft silk mohair together. But it is calling for overall the sport weight. I'm not sure that holding mer merino and soft silk mohair together, I'm not sure that that actually gives... I'm not sure that that's actually a sport weight. But, <laughs> but it, either way, it calls for a sport weight um, in total. And... This pattern comes in only five sizes, however, and I'm trying to find where the measurements are. There we go. So this pattern only comes in five sizes. However, those five sizes encompass a range of 43 inches of bust circumference all the way up to 60.25 inches of bust circumference. But it is intended to be worn very oversized with a positive ease of anywhere from 7.75 to 11.75 inches of positive ease. Um, yeah, and then there's just like a disclaimer that says this is only a recommendation. You can wear it less oversized if you want it to. Um, so even though it's only five sizes, it does still cover quite a, quite a big, um, quite a large range there. Um, yeah, this one's really cute. Like, I think if I were to end up following a pattern to get this kind of a fit, I really think that I might end up knitting this archway sweater and then just making some modifications if I really want to to try and make it more like my idealized sweater that I have fantasized about in my imagination um and the sample photo is even like the exact color of red that I'm envisioning so maybe that's also like giving me pattern blindness here but I just think it's a really cute pattern um like you can see that the sleeves kind of have this balloon silhouette to them which is very similar to what I'd wanted um the more that I look at this the more I might just actually actually might just knit this pattern and call it a day instead of trying to get too too over the top with it um yeah honestly 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 the more that I look at it the more I'm kind of thinking to myself maybe this is just this maybe this is the Cinderella pattern maybe this is just the pattern that I actually wanted all along um but either way, I feel like this is going to be a, a late fall knit with the intention of carrying over to winter. Because I think the finished object is certainly something that I would want in winter more than I would want it in fall. But I think this would be a good transitional piece to be knitting on um, going into winter. Okay, so this is my last sweater in... or true sweater like full sleeved sweater <laughs> in in the roundup but this is the love and peace cardigan by berry knitting um this is a collared cardigan that looks so like 90s it it it's look it looks like so early 90s like between the 80s and the 90s it's just so freaking cute um and it has a cable pattern but then it also has this like stripe in the middle I think this is what gives it that 90s look almost like a rugby stripe um, but within that stripe it's a texture that makes little hearts out of knits and pearls and it's just so cute I love the collar too like I've not knitted anything that has a collar yet and I didn't I mean I had like a slight desire to but I think this is really the one that is going to make me really actually want to do that oh my gosh I just noticed that down the sleeves also you get the you get the heart pattern down down the center of each sleeve too it's so cute um 
so this was released in February 2024. Um, it calls for a worsted weight yarn. The original sample was knitted in Briggs and Little Regal 2-ply, um, and this is knitted on a US 7 or US 6 needle. Um, it does only come in four sizes, from small to extra large, and the bust circumference on those four sizes is a range of 106 centimeters to 125 centimeters um so it is unfortunately not really that size inclusive um like if i were to knit this i'd probably be knitting the larger extra large probably the extra large if i really wanted it to have enough um positive ease to really wear it over things like as a true cardigan um so that is kind of unfortunate um this is a korean pattern uh, that is also published in English, but um, unfortunately with it being a Korean pattern, that is kind of the way things go. <laughs> Korea Korea, and Korean fashion is not super size inclusive, unfortunately. Um, but it's, yeah. Um, this love and peace cardigan though is just so cute. So it's, it is slightly cropped um, and it is worked top down. Um, however, because of the different motifs on here, the si different sizes will have slightly different pattern placement in order to accommodate different sizes. And there's a little diagram on the Ravelry page that shows kind of what that looks like. Um, yeah, it's just really cute. This is certainly one that I don't know if I'm, if I'm actually going to get to this season or like anytime soon, but it's certainly one that's on my radar because it's really cute. Um, and especially with me going to Korea soon, um, if I pick out, um, if I'm able to find some yarn that like fits for knitting this pattern, then I might pick it up. I'm not sure. Um, but it's just a really cute little pattern, the Love and Peace Cardigan by Berry Knitting. So this next little section is for vests and like vest accessories. Um, and like I said, this is just because during the fall here, I have a mighty need for more like layering style pieces. Um, just because the weather, A, fluctuates wildly, <laughs> and two, our fall is not really fall, it's just kind of like an extended summer, and then suddenly it's winter. So, vests are highly coveted <laughs> right now. Um, the first vest that I have to share with you is one that I don't have yarn for, it, but I definitely want to cast on. Um, this is the Darling Vest by Koshir Knit. Um, and Koshir is also on YouTube. Uh, I follow her YouTube like religiously, <laughs> but she posts knitting vlogs of her going through the process of knitting other patterns. But recently she has started designing her own patterns too. And the moment that she dropped like even the preview for this vest on Instagram, I was in love with it. I honestly would have been a test knitter if my Korean was better, but my Korean is not better. So instead I just begged her to publish the pattern in English and the pattern is available in English. So I'm super happy. Um, so this sweater, the Darling Vest, it is, so it's not a button sweater, it's just a regular pull-on kind of sweater vest, um, and it is embroidered with these little tulips within these Argyle-style diamonds on here, and it has this just really cute, like, tie at the top that makes it look, like, so coquette. Um, I remember she, she was, like, saying in the in the video where she was talking about the process of designing this vest that it was named after a 17 song because it was inspired by a 17 music video um which i just thought was funny but this uh this vest calls for sport weight yarn and she used king cole subtle drifter which she purchased um from a yarn store in Korea called uh, Panner Story, which is actually a cafe. If you're on Instagram, if you're on knitting Instagram in any capacity, I'm sure you've seen reels of this cafe. But it's like, it's a cafe in Korea where the bottom part of this, of the building is just like this huge yarn store. And then the top part of the building is a cafe. And the cafe serves like yarn ice cream <laughs> which is just like ice cream but it's in like little strings so it looks like yarn and then they have these cute little like button cakes and stuff like that but definitely planning on going there when i visit korea very very soon and i am i thought it would, i thought it would be really cool because i know that she purchased the yarn there i thought it'd be really cool to 
this time for once in my life actually get the yarn that she used for the sample and use the the, the actual suggested yarn i cannot stress enough how big of a deal this is because i i don't think i have ever 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 in my life actually used the suggested yarn for a pattern so this will be an adventure for me but i kind of i'm kind of really in love with that idea right now and i think it'll make it such a special piece if i actually go to the same store and get the same yarn and knit the same pattern um i don't think in the same color i mean obviously it will depend on what colors are available of the yarn when i get it um but i'm thinking maybe like a light green or something along those lines oh duh her second sample is in a light green uh -huh. but um yeah that's kind of what i'm kind of what i'm thinking so this pattern is available in five sizes with the smallest being um 104 centimeters of bust circumference and the largest being 130 centimeters of bust circumference so once again korean patterns don't usually have a whole lot of size inclusivity but this pattern i think does a does better than most in my opinion with that size range um yes so if I remember correctly, yes, yes, yes. So this pattern is worked bottom up and you have, you knit front and back separately. And then, um, huh, it's, it's bottom up. Just trust me. It's bottom up. <laughs> um, and then it has like the lace pattern, the, the, the lace panel pattern. And then it also has, um, reference videos and it has instructions on how to embroider the little tulips as well. I just think it's such a cute vest for lack of a better word it's very darling and this has been in my solid knitting plans for a while at this point so i'm definitely committed to making this one this season um because i am yarn shopping next month for this and i already have some things on my plans I am not entirely sure where this will fit into my plans, but I swear to God I'm going to squeeze it in because I absolutely need to make this vest. It's so cute. So that is the Darling Vest by Quashir Knit. The second vest on this list is also a like pullover style vest and not button up, um, but this vest is called Adamson by uh, Rui Yamamuro. And this vest calls for worsted weight yarn, um, and this was part of a collection for wool folk, and so it does use a wool folk yarn, but that is not the yarn that I'm going to be using for it. Um, it comes in 10 sizes uh, with a bust circumference of 34.5 inches for the smallest size and 63 inches for the largest size. So this vest is worked top down from the back yoke, and then you uh, knit the front yoke and then you join and then you knit down in the round so pretty typical um one thing i do like about this vest aside from the cute little v-neck there i do like that it has like it has a little bit of design to it um and i say this because i do have yarn for this project already which you may remember from the yarn swap back in january but this is my um hand-dyed alpaca yarn from chile that i picked up at the yarn swap um, it is kind of, it, it, it's a little ratty, so I'm definitely going to give it a little wash before I use it. Um, but this is, this was a super vintage find, and it was really cool, very special to find, because I found six of these. So certainly enough to do something with, not a sweater, but I found that it would be enough to make this vest. And so I was specifically looking for a vest to make with this, because I wanted to make some kind of a garment, like a wearable garment. Um, because it was very rare that I found enough of it to do that with. Um, but a lot of the vests that I found were just a little too simple. Um, and I wanted to have at least a little bit of interest there. So I really like that this vest has these like lines that it makes with lace eyelets to kind of draw the eye visually in and give it a little bit more like visual shaping in a sense. Um, but yeah, so this is a fun pattern. Um, this is another one where even though I have the yarn for it in stash already, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it this season. It is kind of low priority for me, um, but I do still think that it's going to be a really cute piece, particularly for layering. Like you can see in the sample photos that um, they have it styled both on its own and as a layered piece. 
and I think it's just pretty either way like it looks like it will be a very good piece for like wearing to work um, it looks like it'll be very bra friendly so this is certainly one that I want to I do want to add it to my wardrobe at some point soon um, soon ish I should say just because I think it will certainly be well used <laughs> I think that if I were to make this it will it will be well well loved so the next pattern here is not a vest really but it is a worn accessory um this is the umma cape by egg on it um so this is just a really fun pattern like when i saw this i was just kind of like taken aback because i've never seen a pattern like this so it is it i mean it is a cape i guess that is probably like the best way that you could describe this garment but it seems to be an accessory um kind of in the poncho category where it is intended as outerwear so to speak it does not have sleeves but it has kind of like this exaggerated drop shoulder so it comes down to about here and it has this split in the front um so it, it's kind of, it's closed in the front like a sweater but it has this split like like <laughs> i don't know how to describe it it's just really cool um so there are options to knit this shorter or longer and you can see in the sample photos that there are some shorter ones but honestly i just don't think the shorter ones look as cool i think the longer one is just so dramatic and awesome um but it could also be her styling like i'm trying to remind myself that like like to not get trapped in like the skinny blindness you know what i mean um but I, regardless, I just think it's really cool. So this uses um, a DK weight yarn held with a lace weight mohair. Um, I don't even know if it's a mohair. I think it is a mohair. It looks like mohair. Um, but you hold a DK and a lace together for this pattern. However, this looks like it is an absolute yarn muncher because it's so dang long. Um, it, and also, I believe it is mostly garter stitch. Um, which I think might make it go a little bit faster because that's the other thing about this pattern that looks super intimidating is it looks like it is just a lot of knitting <laughs> because it's so long like I can imagine that this would be a similar amount of knitting as like knitting a maxi dress you know because that's about how long it is it is kind of like a duster length almost um but it's just really fun so it comes in four sizes um I'm having the hardest time oh okay this is not in English but I think so the description is not in English but I think I'm going to try and stumble through it and figure it out I think that the bust circumference fi finished bust circumference is 123 centimeters for the smallest size and then 158 centimeters for the largest size which is pretty good that's like a pretty good range actually um and then it is intended to be to be um pretty oversized there okay i do not read um i believe this is norwegian or swedish norwegian possibly um i do not read norwegian but i'm doing my best i think the long version is 100 centimeters long and the short version is 70 centimeters I do genuinely think though if you're gonna make this like just go for gold and make the long version like why would you make the short version it's just so freaking cool like I haven't I think it's I think this pattern is just so cool I know I've said that so many I've, I've literally used the word cool I don't know how many times but it's just so cool it's very innovative and like unique I've never seen a pattern like this um and yeah, once again, not one that I think will fit into my plans anytime soon, but it's certainly one that I'm, I think this is going to get filed into the want to make someday, who knows when that day will be pile. And I just think it's such a fun pattern. Yeah. I totally forgot to mention the suggested yarn for this pattern, which is um, Gepard Garn Pure Lana or Gepard Garn Kid, oh no, okay, so it is Gepard Garn Purilana held with Gepard Garn Kid Seta Tweed, which I believe is going to be that mohair that is being used. Um, it's just cool. Honestly, I wish I could tell you more about the construction. I just do not, 
I do not read the language that is on this Ravelry page, so I'm doing my best here, but um, I don't know, I think it's cool. So we have reached the end of our garments phase and we are getting into our accessories era. So I'm going to start off with a pair of socks, classic. Um, these are the Intertwined Socks by, oh geez. These are the Intertwined Socks by Inge, I'm just gonna take it slow. Inge van de Cave, van de Caveye. So these are the Intertwined Socks by Inge van de Caveye. I did my best. I, I swear to God I did my best. Um, but they're just these really simple socks that have this cute little, um, like, I don't even think it's a rib. I think it's some kind of lace pattern, but it ends up looking like a rib or vertical stripe down the sock. Um, yeah, it's just cute. So it's a top-down sock. There's not a whole lot of information on this pattern here, um, but it is a standard sock, fingering weight yarn. Um, the reason why I like these socks in particular is because there is one photo in the samples that shows these socks being knit in a self-striping yarn and I do have I didn't bring it with me um I do have some self-striping yarn in my stash that I've been kind of looking for a nice pattern to use them on because I feel like with a self-striping yarn you certainly can't use it in just any pattern it's not going to look good in just any pattern um but up, on the other hand I don't really want to necessarily make like a pair of straight vanilla socks with them and so I think the, these socks in particular are going to be very good for that self striping yarn because it does have a design on it but the design is not so busy that it's overwhelming the stripes like the stripes still get their moment but the design also still gets its moment and so that's kind of what I'm that's kind of what I'm envisioning for these socks here it looks like a pretty standard top-down sock um I think this I think this might be an Ive Partridge heel that is shown on this sample. Possibly. Um, but yeah, it looks like just a pretty standard top-down sock. But I think they're cute, and so it is going in my fall knitting plans. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to follow up that pair of socks with another pair of socks. This is the Itty Bitty Berry Socks by Stone Knits. Um, Stone Knits is very much known for her all over color work socks um, and this pair of socks in particular I've been really wanting to make um, so it is um, I believe also top down is the top down tell me if it's top down yes it's top down so they're top down socks that have a pico edge and they feature these cute little strawberries all over the sock um, and I just think they're darling and so I think the pico edge is just so cute. I have knitted a sock with a pico edge before. This was very, very early in my knitting career, and I think I did the pico edge correctly, but I did not do a very good job knitting the rest of the sock. And I also did not choose the correct yarn for these socks, and so there is a giant hole in the socks that I do not care enough about to fix it. Um, like I said, I think this was maybe my second pair of socks ever, which is very ambitious of me to knit one that was like pico edge, lace, all kinds of stuff. Very ambitious of me. Um, but I'm content to toss those socks in the trash, but I do want to do another pair of socks with a pico edge. And additionally, I want to use up my leftovers of my Sugar Daddy yarn from Firebird Yarns or from Seismic Yarn Co. that I bought at Firebird Yarns in San Francisco. Um, I do want to use the leftovers of these, and I think this is enough to make, um, to do some color work, certainly. Um, I believe this is less than half a skein, though, um, so I'm not sure if it will carry me through the whole sock or if I'll have to supplement with another yarn. Um, but I think, it, I think it might be enough because the strawberries is the contrast as opposed to the actual yarn and then um I figure by the time I get to these also I will have finished my foxberry sweater so if I have any leftovers of this green yarn I can use this green yarn as the strawberry tops and like kind of the green contrast there um and then as for a background contrast color I'm thinking of just like a white or like a cream I'm not sure if I have anything in stash for that or if I'll have to go out and buy something um but we'll kind of see how that goes. Yep. Yeah. So 
like I said, this is an all over stranded color work sock. Um, it suggests a light fingering weight and is knitted on a US one or one and a half needle. And so, yeah, I feel like there's not a whole lot else to say about this other than it's just a cute little, cute little strawberry sock. Um, and I'm a sucker for strawberry motifs. So it's just kind of, you know, it's hitting all, hitting all the check marks on here for me. So my next pattern is similar to the sock category, but it is a pair of slippers instead. These are the Woodland Loafers by Claire Slade. Um, and there are these like loafer style slippers that are knitted with a rustic chunky weight yarn. Um, and they just look so cozy. And so uh, this particular sample uses Malabrigo Yarn Chunky, which is a bulky weight yarn. Um, and it uses depending on the size unit because it uh, it runs from size small to size XXL um, it can use anywhere from 95 to 155 yards of bulky weight yarn and guess who has probably 150 yards of bulky weight yarn this girl so from my snowfall sweater I have this much of one skein and I have an entire unused skein and that, I think, is going to be the perfect amount of yarn to knit myself a pair of cozy slippers for the fall. Um, this is one that's kind of been living rent-free in my brain. I just think I just think it will be so cozy to have a pair of hand-knitted slippers for the fall and winter. Like, how cute and cozy is that? I mean, come on, come on, come on. Um, and if and they're going to be in that, like, delightful pink strawberry smoothie color, like, come on. So this is a written pattern i believe a lot of it is going to be knitting flat um but it's going so i believe a lot of it is going to be knitting flat incorporating some shaping it does say here that there is absolutely no finishing required so i will get back to you on what exactly that entails um but it's just cute it's just a cute pattern like they have the little tabs on the back and the little sole and the little like loafer style flat they're just so cute like come on so yeah once again i don't have a whole lot else to say about these but they're so cute so it looks so um claire slade also has another slipper pattern for more of like a boot style um that is called the woodland woodland warmers um i personally liked the loafer style better i just thought the boots looked like a little too much they were kind of um yeah they just looked a little much <laughs> but i really i thought the loafer style was really cute so i'm going to be knitting the loafer style slipper gosh it's just so cute so, yeah i'm obsessed with this one i think as soon as i i don't even know what my milestone is going to be for casting these on but i want to cast them on soon um i feel like maybe if i kick one of my whips out then maybe I'll cast this on. I don't know. Maybe after I finish my current sock set. I don't know. I don't know. So this is the last pattern that I have to share with you. This is one that I've also mentioned on my podcast and have been procrastinating. Like other things have taken precedence and I just keep putting it off, putting it off. I'm declaring it. I'm manifesting it now. This fall is the season where I'm finally going to cast on this freaking pattern. This is Wayworth by Isabella Clark, also known as Hundred Acre Wool on YouTube. Um, this is a cowl pattern that uses mosaic knitting. Um, she uses Honorock Air's Nutidin yarn, uh, which is a lace weight unspun yarn. She uses that for her sample, but I'm pretty sure her second sample. I'm I'm almost positive that her second sample, this um, pinky. I'm trying to find her second sample. My goodness, girl. Um, she knitted a second one that I'm pretty sure was knitted with like a sock yarn, which is pretty much what I'm going to be using to knit it. Um, this was published last year. Um, she actually published this right when I started watching her knitting podcast. Um, so I just had very like strong <laughs> memories of her releasing this pattern. Um, but it's just really cute. So it has, so it has kind of like this like neckerchief kind of silhouette to it which I think is very elegant and fun compared to a lot of other cowl patterns. Um, and it also has these like wrap stitches as part of it, which give it kind of like this almost like 
southwesty kind of vibe um but either way i have yarn for this already that i'm planning on using this is um apothecary fiber company um who i've ranted and raved about and is no longer in business but this was my birthday gift last year from a dear friend of mine um and this is the night of the rose sock set i did not want to use these for socks um and i have been holding on to them for something special this cowl is the pattern i'm saying it now and i picked up more recently this skein of Mano del Uruguay Fino. I believe it's Fino because their font is so hard to read. Um, but this is 70% merino wool and 30% silk. And so I'm planning on using this as the main color, this as the contrast color, and then using this mini skein for the finishings because I believe it has an I-cord edge. So I'm planning on using this mini skein for maybe that I-cord edge and having these all together. Yeah. So my camera's running out of battery. So let me wrap this up real quick. Um, but thank you so much for coming along with me on this journey as I get into the fall headspace and kind of get all this inspiration um, of what I want to knit during the fall. Fall is my favorite season um, right up there with winter. I like winter too, but I feel like I like fall more. Um, and I'm so, so, so excited to get into some of my favorite fall knitting. So thank you for coming along with me on this journey. Hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully you found a pattern that you liked where you found some kind of inspiration for your own fall knitting. Um, if you did, let me know down in the comments. I'd also love to hear any other fall vibe patterns that, um, that have come your way that you are planning on casting on that you might be knitting right now. Um, I love to hear about all of that. Um, if you like this video, please take a moment to leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you like what I do here. So I think that's it for today. Um, thank you so much for watching and until next time, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye!